After telling you that gear matters in my last video, we are going to see what we can do with entry-level equipment this time. My name is Wolf Amri, Wolf Amri on Instagram, and today I will show you how to photograph spring flowers. We're here in the hills near my hometown, Vienna, and this will be my first vlog-style video. Let me know in the comments if you like this better than the studio stuff. What do I have in my camera bag today? Not much. First of all, the Canon T7, and the other one is the bigger brother, Canon T7i. The most important difference for today is a display that is tiltable. Then we have a very cheap five-in-one reflector. We're going to need it desperately. A display loop and a very tiny and cheap tripod. Usually, when I see people taking pictures of spring flowers, it goes like this. Oh, another one! That's not what we're going to do today. First of all, find the perfect flower. If it has some withered petals, try to find another one. If it's not quite perfect, but has some withered parts in it, try to remove them. But be careful not to destroy the flower, especially with endangered species like this one. Regarding the camera settings, I like to use very wide apertures like f1.8 to f2.8 because I like very shallow depth. But if you don't have that, like on most kit lenses, I would use a lot bigger numbers like f8 to f11 to get a rather wide depth of focus. And for shutter speed, I like to use at least 1 100th one of a second because we usually have at least a little wind and we want to avoid motion blur due to the flowers moving. Easiest is to shoot 90 degree down, but make sure to not cast a shadow on the flower. If you're not shooting down, try to get down to low angles. The problem is, you don't see what you're photographing. And that's where a tiltable display would come in handy. Otherwise, you would look like this. That would guarantee a sore neck. And you still don't get the perspective when you're shooting from bottom up. So I will change cameras and use the T7i instead of the T7 because it has a tiltable display. I can now turn my camera to live view and comfortably check the display while it's on the floor. My next tip would be see the light. You don't want to photograph the flower in backlight like this, but rather have the light coming from the side or from the back, but don't cast shadows. Luckily, most flowers face towards the morning sun, so use that for your planning. Of course, you can always handhold your camera, but particularly with spring flowers that are not all that high, you can use a very small and affordable tripod. That way, you can get really low perspectives. That will bring us to the most important part, fine-tuning your composition. If you, like me, have problems judging your exposure or composition in the bright sunlight, let me recommend a display loop. That way you can comfortably check both exposure and composition and easily shoot outdoors, even in the brightest sunlight. Now to my real secret. This is a five in one reflector. Very small, I use the smallest one, which has a 30 centimeter diameter. And they come in different sizes, up to one meter 80. They consist of two parts. One being the inner part that can act as a scrim, and the other one is the outer part that can act as a reflector, worth their weight in gold. For comparison, I will first take a picture without any reflectors. You may now wonder why I shoot in burst mode. Reason being is that we have some slight wind and the flowers are moving. So if I take only one shot, that might end up blurry because of motion blur. Taking several consecutive images means usually that one of them is sharp. The next shot will be using the scrim only. And you already see it's pretty handy having the camera on the tripod. And now we're going to create some real eye candy. We are going to use the reflective part and put it right under the flowers and the reflector will bounce some light back from the sun to the flowers. And to get a really special image, you want to combine the reflector with the scrim. I will hold the scrim right above the flowers 
but I take care not to shade the reflector because the reflector still needs to bounce the light back to the flowers. And then I'll take a few images. As you can see, these 5-in-1 reflectors are worth their weight in gold. You can even use them for portraits. But then, of course, a bigger one. They start at $15 and I will leave you a link down in the description. See how they work. And that's it for today. Don't forget to leave me your feedback in the comments so that I know whether you liked it or not. See you next time.